Today's video is a 10 inch vase. This is Bob Jennings. Thanks for watching. I saw this hollow form on the internet and I thought it'd make a great segmented project. The question is, how do you go from a picture to a segmented project plan? There are several programs out there. I happen to use Bill Candler's Segmented Project Planner. The planner gives you all the required material. I went through the scrap pile and got a bunch of maple that I'm going to make the vase from. Alright, let's get after it. We're going through the segmented process very quickly here, but in a future video, we'll go through it in a bit more detail. All right guys, get in position. Nice little backflip.
This is the bottom ring, ring 13. It has to be perfectly flat to line up with the rest of the vase and we're going to put a plug into it to prevent further cracking in the bottom. This plug on the inside doesn't go all the way through. There will be another plug coming in from the back side that will overlap this one. We'll turn this flat and be ready to glue it on to the rest of the vase. Now we've stacked rings 13 through 5 and we're turning the bottom tenon. We'll reverse chuck it and then we'll turn the outside. With segmented turning there's a lot of ghosting when you first start. What I mean by that is you're turning here to a fair degree because you're just hitting the high points. And most of us don't bother with instructions, but it's probably a good idea to refer to them occasionally. Here I'm gluing a sacrificial block on the bottom of rings one through four. This block will have a tenon on it and then will allow us to put it into the chuck. To achieve maximum gripping strength with your chuck, you need to have a good fit up between your chuck and the workpiece. Even though the two halves aren't glued together yet, I'm taking this opportunity to do a bit of a transition on the outside. Once the outside of both halves is lined up, I can start working on the inside. Rings 13 through 5 are finished, now we're just doing the top part, rings 1 through 4. Finally at the glue up stage for the two halves. I'm using a shear scraping technique with the blow gouge to use the bottom flute.
I'm using the steady rest to take away some of the vibration. This is a hollowing tool with a laser indicator. It lets me know how closely I'm to the sidewall. At the bottom here, I ran into a problem. I hadn't taken away enough material from the foot. And if I don't now, I won't be able to center the piece and remove it later. This is the time to do it. But it's a bit of a butt clencher. As you can see, I'm awfully close to the chuck. But I'm doing the voiceover after the fact, so I know how it turns out. I'm going to use a vacuum chuck to hold the piece while I remove the foot. With a vacuum chuck, you don't mar up your surface. I'm not taking it all off, there's going to be some darker highlights. Trust me, it'll be okay, I think. Black, red, orange, and now just a little bit of yellow to lighten it up. About two dozen coats of wipe on poly with sanding in between. Well, this segmented project turned out reasonably close to the picture off the internet. These segmented projects are huge time consumers. This was almost 30 hours in total. In the future, we will do a very similar piece, but out of a solid block of wood, and we'll do a time comparison on that. Well, that's it for this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If so, please subscribe. Thumbs up are appreciated, and I always look forward to your comments. This is Bob Jennings from The Woodpile. Thanks for watching. If anyone has an idea as to how many pieces make up this project, leave your answer in the comments below.